Hello and a warm welcome to Sharad Chandra IAS Academy, where your dreams are our mission. This is Yathar Thir. Today we are going to cover news related to 15th of March 2024. We'll be focusing on uh, mapping as well and other important minor news. All right, so let's first begin with the, the panel, recommend simultaneous polls. So there was a panel found for this specific discussion under the ex-president Ramnath Kovind and it has recommended the simultaneous polling. So what is this simultaneous polling? All right, what constitution amendments have to be made for this? What articles, etc. might be added in the constitution for this? Would state ratification be required? And what are the pros? That means benefits. And what are the cons for this? All right, so all these things we must take care of. When you are making notes, you just make notes in this format. All right, however, we will cover in a short manner here. So simultaneous elections for the state assembly and Lok Sabha were held till 1967. That means this was the norm earlier. However, in 1968 and 69, some legislative assemblies, that mean state assemblies, were dissolved prematurely. Followed by the dissolution of the Lok Sabha in 1970. This forced a change in the electoral schedules for the states and the country. So while the gap is the same, that means five years, various different states, the let's say there are elections in two or three states now at the same time. This is what we see usually that in three states, the elections are happening in this certain month or this certain year. All right. But what happens that three and other states will have elections next year, two or three states. All right. So ball results will come in those states. So this is the issue. While the duration, interduration is same, five years, this group has a or various different groups of states have elections in various different years. So this problem is to be solved by this recommendation. So the committee has recommended holding simultaneous elections for the Lok Sabha and state legislative assemblies from which year 2029. That means from the next election cycle. Subsequently, elections for municipalities and panchayats would be synchronized eventually with the Lok Sabha and state assembly polls, ensuring that they take place within 100 days of the main elections. 100 days means on and around three months maximum time. All right. Now, let us see what are the pros and cons. So those in favor, they say what? That polling is expensive, but organizing a state assembly and Lok Sabha election simultaneously may reduce the overall cost burden on the government. Secondly, besides simultaneous elections may save time and the government can get five stable years to focus on governance instead of winning polls. And the third thing is to ensure that a state government does not fall without an alternative. The Law Commission recommended that no confidence motion against the government should be followed by a confidence motion so that if the opposition doesn't have the numbers to form an alternative government, the regime in office cannot be removed. All right, so there should be a hung government law, basically it is called. We'll cover it later. Let us just focus briefly now. So those against it say what? That EVMs which have a lifespan of 15 years. All right, would only be used three times under the one nation, one election proposal. So this is not a very big thing. To implement the new election rules, five articles in the Constitution and Representation of People Act would have to be amended. Every recognized state and national party would have to agree to the change. So this can also happen. This is not a big deal. Third thing is no proposal made for a provision for hung legislatures or the premature dissolution of government. So if everything is synchronized, all right, then no government should be dissolved prematurely between these five years. All right, this was the main issue that caused the issue, uh, the problem that we are currently facing, that different timelines for various different states. All right, just because, let's say one state was dissolved for three years or before that their complete five-year term. So no proposal has been made for this, but there is a proposal made for this. We'll cover it when we cover in the complete lecture. All right, next one is if the center will continue to have the power. Just a second. All right, to dismiss the state government under Article 356, there cannot be one nation, one poll rule eligible. So basically, if the center will continue to have power to dissolve or the dismiss the state government, then how can one nation, one poll rule is eligible? Fourth thing is voter may end up voting on national issues even for the state polls. All right, this is correct, a very big thing actually. All right, whatever their issues are going on in the center or for uh, let's say national issues, then voters will have a separate opinion about this government okay so this may favor a single party system 
that whichever party is able to solve the national issues they may also come in the state so various uh, different states will have the double engine government all right the same government in the state as well as the center so this uh, thing may favor a single party so under this rule a wave of one person or one issue may give unbridled power to rule so this uh, let's say we are concerned about modi ji right now okay this is hinting about modi ji the current prime minister of india so the opposition is saying that because of his charmistic attitude and uh, a penchant towards solving the national issues all right he may also gain popularity in the smaller states or during their polls okay so opposition is not very happy with this but we don't have to deal uh, with this in the upsc okay we can just talk about this uh, this line that under this rule a wave of one person or one issue may give unbridled power to rule just for understanding we need to learn this all right let's see the next news that is india comes 134th in global human development index as per the undp all right so what is important for us what is undp united nations development program okay so india has moved up a rank on the uh, global human development index that is hdi according to the undp report and what is the name of the report breaking the gridlock reimagining cooperation in a polarized world so what can come in the exam that this this name can come and they will ask that uh, this report was released by which of the organizations so answer will be undp or it can come as one of the statement the statement is whether true or false that means how many statements are correct so if you are not sure about this release this uh, this report is released by undp you will not be able to mark all right let's see about the undp so undp was officially established on november 22nd 1965 by the un general assembly that is unga all right so it was founded in november 22 1965 and where are the headquarters they are in new york city in the usa the core focus is in eradicating poverty achieving sustainable development goals that is sdg and building strong nations and the area of operation is around 170 countries globally let's come to the next news that is what are the causes of flare up in eastern congo so first of all please remember the name of the country eastern congo or eastern drc democratic republic of the congo a uh, last time question came in prelims 2023 about this all right and in prelims 2021 question also came 22 also question came about the coup in somalia all right so this uh, these countries whether this is the sahel region whether it is the sahara region and the terrorism in this region we recently we talked about the haiti crisis as well all right that was near in the caribbean jamaica coast okay so this uh, these countries are very important the questions can come from here all right so renewed clashes in the eastern uh, democratic republic of congo drc have sparked a global concern worsening the humanitarian crisis so we'll just read the highlights i've already highlighted the important portions so fighting between the congolese army and rwandan backed m23 group so this is a let's say conflict between two countries one is rwanda and one is the army of congo all right so it is intensifying around sake and nyamzile uh, resulting in death displacement and food security crisis so this is the introduction and now let's see what is the conflict all right so an ending cycle of violence has engulfed the eastern region of the central african country for decades so this is not something new all right with the conflict originating in two civil wars in 1994 an estimated 8 lakh minority ethnic tutsis and hutu all right moderates were killed in extremists Uh, extremist hutus in 100 days in what is known as the rwandan genocide so this is to be remember these questions or this let's say just a second so from here what can be asked let me just clear this just wait all right all right so it is giving us the name of minorities with which minority it is giving tutsis as well as the hutu all right so this can be asked in upsc directly that where are these minorities living uh, earlier a question came on the afghanistan the minorities on afghanistan all right so please remember the name tutsis and hutus all right and the rwandan genocide you can read about it the rwandan genocide this is this was the major cause of conflict all right so now let us see just a second the mapping portion here so which area we are talking about so we are talking about this area here this is drc democratic republic of congo and we are talking about this eastern side all right this side the rwanda rwanda is this side here okay near the congo river this is the flow area of congo river here all right and this is the portion eastern portion of drc where the conflict is going on 
so let's see about more mapping all right okay so this is the area we see this is the drc and this is the eastern drc this whole complete area all right there are multiple lakes here we talked about all these lakes lakes kivu lake edward lake albert okay and please see the countries that are falling here this is uganda this is rwanda the kigali agreement you remember from the environment okay so please read about this kigali also okay this is burundi so in this area in the eastern drc the fight is going on there is a conflict going on all right so you can uh, just remember the mapping portion from here okay see these uh, countries are also small areas also north kivu south kivu ituri so these are the part of drc democratic republic of congo so earlier a question came that which countries are not part of the drc all right so this can be asked rwanda burundi uganda these are not the part of drc all right let's come to the next news that is gyanesh kumar uh, both are ias sukhbir sandhu appointed election commissioners so they, they he is not they are not the chief election commission they are not the cec all right cc is already there we will see okay cc is rajiv kumar cc is rajiv kumar okay so let's talk about this news just read the highlighted portions the president is pleased to appoint so they are appointed by the president all right please remember this shri ganesh kumar ias and dr sukhbir singh sandhu both are ias uh, so they are uh, selected as election commissioners in election commission of india so this is also permanent all india body okay permanent all india body furthermore this is the first time that election commissioners have been appointed in accordance with the new chief election commissioner and other election commissioners appointment rules of 2023 all right so this was bought in the brought in the government by only uh, brought by the government only in the last year according to the act this is very important just a second so according to the act a selection committee headed by prime minister okay so committee is headed by the prime minister this is the first thing and appointment is by the president appointment is by the president so committee is headed by the prime minister and comprising a union minister first of all nominated by the prime minister so this is union minister here then and the leader of the opposition in lok sabha leader of the opposition in lok sabha all right will select members of the election commission in the current committee union home minister amit shah is the cabinet minister so here this is amit shah and this is adhir randan choudhury all right this is adhir randan choudhury being the congress leader of the house in the lok sabha so we'll just ar ar choudhury will name here okay now next thing is what that supreme court uh, ruled something in march 2023 they said that the selection committee must include or should include cgi also okay chief justice of india also but this was did, did not happen this time all right and the president appointed these two people as the election commissioners okay and please also remember that election panel is completely oh, sorry currently held by cc rajiv kumar he is the chief election commissioner of india rajiv kumar the two election commissioners were appointed following vacancies in poll panel so that is not important to us all right next thing is uh, the congress is saying that modi wants one nation no election so what are they saying what is the basis of their saying all right so let's just uh, read the highlighted portion so one nation one election but the worst is as government will no more have to worry about people's fury for 5 years it will be the death knell for indian federalism okay this word is very important what is federalism in context of india and what basic topic it goes with is state center relation or center state relation so when let's say one nation one election is happening then the more influential central government will have more influence on the state elections as well at the same time so this is the basic uh, let's say fear of the opposition parties that whatever national issues are there if the central government is focusing or influencing the state poll as well so this may create a harm to the federalism of india all right so what are they saying that his party did not agree with the proposal it was not practical in india so why okay this can itself become a question that why the uh, matter or the let's say proposition of uh, one nation no one election is not practical in india okay so it has a multi party democracy this can be the first answer or first statement to your answer that what we should be discussing in instead is comprehensive electoral reforms this is just a sinister design introduce a presidential form of government and read about this also what is a presidential form of government in which countries is this applicable right now 
ओके विच कंट्रीज हैव दिस प्रेसिडेंशियल फॉर्म ऑफ गवर्नमेंट एंड वाई इट इज नॉट प्रैक्टिकल इन इंडिया वाई इट इज नॉट प्रैक्टिकल इन इंडिया सो दीज आर द परस्पेक्टिव फ्रॉम दिस न्यूज और लाइट नेक्स्ट वन लेट्स सी सो इंडिया लाइकली टू स्टार्ट फ्री ट्रेड डील्स विद ई ए ई यू सो वट इज दिस ई ए यू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल रिमेंबर दीज फाइव कंट्रीज बेलारूस अर्मीनिया कजाकिस्तान किगरिस्तान एंड रशिया सो दीज फोर आर सेंट्रल एशियन एटलीस्ट दीज थ्री आर सेंट्रल एशियन और लाइट दिस बेलारूस एंड अर्मीनिया आर ऑल्सो वेरी कनेक्टेड टू द रशियन काउंट पार्ट्स सो इंडिया इज सीरियसली कंसिडरिंग स्टार्टिंग टॉक्स फॉर फ्री ट्रेड एग्रीमेंट विद यूरेशियन इकोनॉमिक यूनियन दैट इज ई ए ई यू All right. So, who said this? Foreign Minister of Belarus, Sir J. Elnik, declared during his two-day visit to India. So, let's talk about this EAU. It was established. It is an economic union, and it was established in 2015, aiming for economic integration among its member states. So, there are five member states. We already know Russia, Belarus, Kazakhstan, Armenia, and Kyrgyzstan. So, two are at least Central Asian. Then there is Russia and Belarus. They are very much allies. Armenia is also pretty much ally with this uh, Russia, and Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan are both Central Asian countries. So this can be our economic doorway towards this North Central Asian market. Okay, so they create a common market similar to European Union, just by the common rules, common tariffs, etc., etc., and they promote free movement of goods, services, capital, and labor across all these countries. So key feature is integrated single market, common economic policies, harmonized regulation across member states. All right, let's see this one. So Tamil Nadu tops illegal trade in shark body parts. So we are talking about Tamil Nadu here. Okay, Tamil Nadu accounted for almost sixty-five percent of the illegal trade in shark body parts. So shark is a cartilaginous fish. Okay, so its cartilage is believed to have medicinal properties. Okay, but it is a myth. It is not true. No fish has any medicinal properties in its own cartilage. All right, because it is simply highland cartilage, not of any use. So, a new analysis of seizures by traffic and WWF India. So, what is this traffic? When was it established? All right. So, we know we need to know about both. What is this traffic and what is WWF India? We need to know about both. So, traffic is trade records analysis of flora and fauna in commerce. So, flora is trees, plants, etc. and faunaize animals etc so this can be a statement does traffic deal with the records of both flora and fauna or only fauna so majorly we hear about the fauna okay so this can uh, we we could mark it incorrect but it is actually correct that it deals with both okay and the analysis released on thursday it's not important for us important is the fact sheet titled natural in illegal wildlife trade sharks of india this was reposed uh, sorry released by which of the organization so answer is traffic All right. So let's talk about the traffic. So trade records analysis of flora and fauna. Please remember it is both flora and fauna because there are two F. All right. So this can be easily deciphered from the name itself. It was established in 1976 and it is a global network without any single headquarters. Traffic committee is steering group with members from its partner organization WWF and IUCN. So it basically works under the World Wildlife Fund and International Union of Conservation for Nature. All right. So it's focus on combating illegal wildlife trade through research, monitoring, and influencing policy changes. Activities are basically general activities. Keeps an account of what is going on in the, in the commerce field regarding the flora and fauna. How much is, uh, how many animals or plants are being trafficked, etc. All right. So WWO of India. Let's talk. It has multiple functions as well. Uh, they are written here, but majorly it just deals in the statistics and capacity building as well as public awareness. All right. It also has collaboration. Let's say in India, it has collaboration with WWF. All right. World Wide Fund for Nature, India. So let's talk about this. So WWF India. It was established in 1962, and headquarters in New Delhi, India. Its focus is on protecting wildlife and promoting environment sustainability in India. So activities are same again. Conservation programs for endangered species, tigers, rhinos. Rhinos we recently read in the Pobitora. Pobitora WLS is in Assam. Only yesterday we read about this. All right, habitat protecting initiatives, promoting renewable energy and sustainable practices, advocating for environmental policy changes, and collaboration with local communities, basically tribals, government agencies, and other NGOs. All right. So this was the news for today. Thank you very much. This is Yatharthir. I'll see you in the next lecture. Have a great day. Keep studying. See you soon.